the holy name forever amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen dear brothers and sisters in christ the holy season of lent has opened its doors penitential tombs call us you children of men the time of repentance has come we might have the question is it really necessary for the Church to spend weeks every year preaching penance and conversion to us? If ever it was necessary, my friends, it is today. The world has never been a stronger attraction. The pleasures it offers to people are like opium for the soul. The danger is great that people do not see the light from above and close their ears to God's word. But God's call is not overheard by all. You, my dear friends, are an example of knowing what God is asking of us currently. Our mother, the church, knows what is most important and decisive: the salvation of the soul. She takes us by the hand and leads us to the suffering Savior, we want to follow her. During Lent, we want to contemplate the passion of the Lord through the mysteries of the sorrowful rosary. We want to look at the man of sorrows along the stations of his life, his suffering from the Mount of Olives up to Golgotha. Today we visit the Mount of Olives. In the twilight of the evening, we go into the Garden of Olives, we see Christ kneeling on the ground, his face pale as death, his breath is heavy, blood runs to the earth, mingles with the sweat of fear. Grief pushes the soul of the Savior to the ground. What sorrow might it be? The Lord is a priest, and he is a shepherd. He wanted to save the souls of his fellow men. For them he came, he labored for them, and the Jewish people almost unanimously refused to believe in him. At first they followed him in crowds, but once the sensation had cooled down, they left him. The leaders of the people hated him right from the beginning. They gave him a hard time wherever they could. Their hearts were hardened in malice. Soon they will cry out, Crucify him, crucify him. This is what the Lord sees on the Mount of Olives. In vain his truth shone, in vain his love warmed, in vain tomorrow his heart breaks in agony, for most of them in vain, and today. We see how people let themselves be captured by unbelief and walk blasphemously out of the church into the camp of her mortal enemies. How many do not take this step, but actually do not believe? We do not know. Thus his Christian people and its leaders, the great ones, the statesmen, the politicians, what about them? In which parliament today is God's name mentioned and invoked? The members of parliaments ask for the will of the majority of the people. They do not ask for the will of God. They proclaim the rights of men, but they disregard the rights of God. They let unbelief proliferate, and the Lord foresees this on the Mount of Olives. He stands up. He can no longer do it alone. He seeks consolation from his servants. The Creator seeks comfort from the creatures. He wakes them up, drowsy, not understanding, they look at him. He comes back, falls to the ground, tormented, shuddering with anxiety and fear. Then he lifts his head and cries to the Father, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. He knows what he has come to do, to suffer for unredeemed humanity. 
He knows what God asks from him, the sacrifice of his life. Nevertheless, he begs God in this hour to refrain from his passion, but only if it is possible. He already knows that it will not be possible. Now we know, my dear friends, how should we pray in the olive hour of our lives. We may pray that we may be spared the trial, but at the same time we must ask, if we are not to be spared, then, O Lord, then, O God, let me bear it, that you have borne it. And there's something else we know from this hour on the Mount of Olives. God does not abandon his own, never, in any adversity. He also does not abandon his son in his hour of agony. He sends him a heavenly messenger, an angel, who comforts him. A creature comforts the Creator. Let us follow the way of the cross. Its stations are not a parade. They are heartfelt inventions, invitations. Come and see what our Lord has suffered for you. And let us pray the sorrowful rosary, preferably together with our relatives in the evening, as it has been a time-honored custom in many Christian families. The Savior cannot so be surpassed in generosity. If we do not forget him in his suffering, then he also does not forget us in our hour of agony, sending his angel to comfort and strengthen us, who leads us happily beyond the gates of death. We want to walk this way at the hand of Our Lady, the Sorrowful Mother, who has promised to those devoted to her sorrows, among other things, to grant peace to their families, to defend them in their spiritual battles with infernal enemies, and that those who propagate this devotion to her tears and dolors will be taken directly from this earthly life to eternal happiness. May we learn from her how to courageously carry our crosses following Christ. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.